Hey guys, what's going on? Laying back for a Hulu review, and today I'm going to be taking a look at No Exit. No Exit is an American thriller based on the novel of the same name, and tells the story of Darby Thorne, a young woman who is undergoing rehabilitation for a drug addiction. After she learns that her mother is in the hospital for a serious illness, Darby sneaks out and attempts to drive there, but a blizzard forces her to stay at a visitor center until the next day. After exchanging pleasantries with the other guests, Darby discovers to her horror that a little girl is being held captive in a van that belongs to one of the guests at the center. This leads her to work against the clock to identify the culprit and try to find a way to rescue the girl before the blizzard subsides. This proved to be a slow burn kind of thriller, which is the kind that I enjoy the most. It takes its time in setting up the characters and the world in which they inhabit, and once things get going, the suspense builds from one event to the next and never lets up. It can be derivative at times, but it all works out thanks to the lead character. I have to admit that Darby Thorne, who's played by Havana Rose Lou, was a bit unlikable at first. She throws a bad attitude toward every character she encounters, but I eventually realized it was because of her drug addiction, specifically how many times she tried and failed to overcome it. Her family background is explored in depth as well, with both her mother and sister wanting next to nothing to do with her, on account of how her addiction has affected the family, especially after the death of her father. Details are revealed sparingly, so there was enough information given to me to sympathize with Darby without being bogged down by lots of exposition. Darby seems to change as a character almost as soon as she encounters the girl in the van, and it's fitting considering her background. Darby finally has a reason to care about her life again, if for no other reason than to protect someone else's, and seeing the lane she went to in order to protect her was a compelling experience. The other supporting characters aren't quite as interesting at first, but they do become more intriguing as details of their personal lives come to light. Ed and Sandy are sort of the voices of reason within the group, Ash is calm and collected, while Lars is unhinged and has more than a few screws loose. All of the characters take time to know each other, which does make things a bit slow in the beginning, but I think it works in this movie's favor, because it helps set the stage for the events to follow, and I found myself becoming more emotionally invested in what happened to the characters as a result of this buildup. And while it can be slow in this sense, I was surprised by how quickly things took off once Darby found the girl. The movie doesn't waste any time in revealing who the culprit is behind the kidnapping, which allows more time to be dedicated toward the thrill sequences. There's a variety of cat and mouse games at play as Darby has to evade the culprit in increasingly intense scenarios, as she has to balance between helping the girl while doing her best to avoid arousing suspicion, which often resulted in nail-biting close calls that made me react to them out loud. The movie is also not afraid to take advantage of its R rating. Things inevitably take a turn for the worse, and Darby has to resort to increasingly desperate measures to turn things around, which results in the violence getting amped up. There were definitely some scenes that were bloody and even a bit gory, but it never felt excessive. It always felt grounded in its presentation, it never seemed like the violence was overdone for the sake of shock value, save for one scene toward the end, which I actually found to be quite amusing. Some strange explicit scenes do find their way into the story though. The biggest problem I had in this regard was how Darby snorted cocaine she snuck into the center so she could gather the energy to escape a hairy situation. I'm not sure if this happens in the book or not, and I know why she does it, but it still came off as cheesy and went against the dark gritty tone this movie went for. Thankfully, there aren't many silly scenes like this in the movie. A good chunk of it takes place outside, with either Darby helping the girl or running in the woods from the culprit. The atmosphere of the exterior scenes was fan fantastic thanks to the cold scenery and creative cinematography, which emphasized a sense of isolation that further enhanced suspense. This being said, I think it's a bit weird how some of the characters, aside from Darby, take a long time to suspect that something's up. People are always coming and going from the center, and the excuses they use to do so get used up pretty quickly, and then they stop giving any. It makes a little more sense later on, but I still found it strange how the innocent characters didn't question anything. There's a climactic event as well where everything is revealed that left me scratching my head. Prior to this, characters had been sneaking in and out of the building using a hole in the wall to avoid raising suspicions since anyone could have been the culprit, so Darby uses the hole to her advantage, and so does the culprit later on. Eventually, a standoff happens between characters inside and outside of the building, and it left me wondering why they didn't just use the hole in the wall to their advantage, since it's not like it had been sealed off. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's a plot hole, sorry I had to say it, but it is confusing nonetheless. 
However, I do have to say that a plot twist after this encounter did help to offset the awkwardness of it. There's lots of other little twists revealed throughout the story as well that kept me guessing and thus invested in the story, but this twist in particular was one that genuinely caught me off guard. I was impressed at the level of psychological impact this movie was able to pull off, both through these twists and in dialogue. Once the culprit corners Darby, they reference her family history to get under her skin and force her to cooperate with them, which was a great way of developing all characters involved. And at this point, I have to mention that the actress who plays the girl in the van, Jay, I think her name was, did a stellar job in her performance. Her character has her own history like Darby does that is explored in enough detail without overwhelming the viewer. I imagine that it's not easy to play a child character in an R-rated movie in a believable manner, but she 100% pulls it off here. The thing I appreciate the most about this movie is how effective of a use it makes of its runtime. At just over 90 minutes in length, it tells a simple story effectively with enough twists and turns to keep things interesting without over staying its welcome, and considering how long movies are getting these days, that is a very good thing. Overall, No Exit is a great thriller story that is pretty simple in scope, but there is beauty to be found in its simplicity. If you like survival thrillers, especially those that take place in claustrophobic, isolated settings, this movie is definitely right up your alley. Even though there are a few confusing narrative decisions in it, they never get in the way of the bigger picture. Its captivating main character, dark aesthetic presentation, and tight pacing all contribute to a tense cinematic experience that is well worth your time in watching. What did you think about this movie? Did you enjoy the movie as much as I did, or were there some things I didn't mention that you also took issue with? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap up my review of No Exit. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review the American comedy Tyler Perry's A Medea Homecoming. Bye bye!